David Attenborough, A Life on Our Planet is the latest offering from the legendary David Attenborough and his nature documentaries, the man now in his mid-90s. Known mainly for his incredible documentaries such as Planet Earth, Planet Earth 2 and Blue Planet, in recent years Attenborough has shifted away from showcasing the incredible majesty and diversity of our natural world to something he only used to sparingly remind us about, climate change and man's destruction of the natural world. Interestingly, the more I see of Attenborough going all out with the warnings of climate change, the less and less I'm seeing his documentaries on the British Broadcasting Corporation, the BBC, which has in recent years become a mouthpiece for the Conservative Tory government, and his more recent works like Our Planet and this documentary have been made by Netflix instead. Attenborough refers to this film as his witness statement as to what is going on in the world, and few can say they've seen as much of the natural world up close and personal as him, and in addition to this, his cultural significance makes this documentary, which seems so much more personal than the others I've seen from Attenborough, just a bit special. For sure, Attenborough is far more passionate and emotive in this doc than in any other I've seen. The segments of him talking to the camera, whether it's a case of him being a good actor or expressing genuine emotion, seems as if he's going off script and he seems more personal and intimate than ever. The structure of the documentary reflects this, as Attenborough's own life as a nature explorer is shown and used as the pivot to tell the story of a quickly changing world. We start with the 90-plus Attenborough in Chernobyl, a place utterly devastated by human error, and now remarkably recaptured by nature with blossoming greenery and wildlife, and this metaphor is used for the greater picture that Attenborough tries to tell us, in that great changes are coming if we do not take drastic action, but even if we don't, nature will continue, with or without us. Attenborough throws some shocking and stunning statistics at our faces. I was particularly surprised by his mentioning of the fact that the average temperature of the world has not changed by one degree in the past thousand years, and yet has changed within his lifetime. As he goes through his years until present day, the documentary documents the steady but sharp decline of the natural world at the hands of man's ravaging ambition and lack of foresight, and one particularly saddening moment is Attenborough coming to the realisation that even in the peak of his career, when he was exploring and discovering all those wonderful animals and places, the process was already in place, and the natural world was already dying. The film is essentially split into three segments. The first and longest is Attenborough's witness statement. There are not too many amazing shots of landscape and wildlife as is the norm with Attenborough's films, at least not to his usual high standards. In fact, I think most of the shots are reused footage from previous documentaries, but that isn't really the point of this particular film. And there are enough wildlife shots to keep interested even the most bored climate change oblivious folk. The second segment was quite interesting, something quite new for an Attenborough film, which was essentially what he would have experienced in his life if he was born right now. In other words, a quick look at what scientists say will happen in the future, decade by decade, at the current rate, with some scary segments that come across as so devastating they seemed startlingly similar to videos you see online from religious groups about you know the end of the world and the incoming doomsday. The third segment is Attenborough explaining what we can do about it. The solutions are pretty much, you know, more of the same of what we know, like reducing and ultimately cutting out our reliance on unsustainable energy like fossil fuels and turning to renewable natural energy sources. One solution he had that I did not agree with was population control. I feel that this was presented in a very basic fashion, basically saying that there is not enough space and food for the growing amount of people which doesn't take into account many factors like the concentrated ownership of vast amounts of land from a very small percentage of people, and the excess amount of food intake and waste from, again, a small percentage of people. This is one part of the documentary I strongly disagreed with, and I found it to be almost sympathetic and in line with globalist agendas of population control and, and reduction like that of shadowy elites such as those that had the Georgia Guidestones constructed. A much more fitting solution was another that Attenborough advocated, which was for us to change our diets, 
and reduce our meat consumption and increase our ratio of plant-based meals, which is a great piece of advice, not only for our health, but the planet. He doesn't say we should drop our drumsticks and become vegans, but just reduce our meat intake. I'm guilty of this more than most. Really two days go by when I haven't stuffed my face with chicken or lamb. And as Attenborough mentions, remarkably, humans and the animals, the, the livestock that humans breed for consumption, take up the majority of the biomass of animals in the world. The remaining percentage was something shocking, like 4% or something. One issue I have with the documentary is one that I have with the most of its type, in that, who is this doc aimed at? You and me? The layman? The people who put our baked bean cans in the recycling bin at the end of the week? The reality is, is that the huge corporations that thrive on fossil fuels, and the meat industry, and all the bombs that are dropped in the world, and all the corporations that have power specifically because of this destruction that they are causing, are the ones who can truly make effective change. Even so, I feel as though this talk is a fitting showcase of how we as mankind have ravaged the natural world, and it is a great personal send-off for perhaps the greatest icon of the nature documentary, David Attenborough.